Hey everybody, this is Nicole with Topaz and thanks so much for joining us here today. We are here today with Ganek Chauvin to, for Enhance Your Mobile Photography with Topaz. Hello. Hello Nicole, how are you? <laughs> Good, thanks for being here. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. Yes. So with that, let me tell you a little bit more about Yannick. He is a professional photographer from Montreal, Canada, and a successful stock photographer with clients like Oprah.com and the Wall Street Journal. For the last few years, he has been focusing on didactic publishing houses with publishers like Wiley and Elsevier, producing a wide range of books for the private educational sector. Being a teacher at heart, in 2008, Yannick decided to share his photography knowledge through various photography tutorials on his blog. It's called Yannick's Photo School, and it is awesome if you have not been there. His, um, it's completely 100% free, and it's very successful, and lots of people visit each visit each month. He is also the co-creator of the highly acclaimed iPhone photo app King Camera and is currently working on other mobile apps for the avid mobile photographer. And that brings us back to our subject today, which is enhancing your mobile photography with Topaz. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, hello everybody. Thanks for joining me here. I was just reading some of the comments before we went live, and one of them that struck me was, uh, Topaz brings the world together through the webinar, and I thought that was a pretty cool uh, little quote, so I want to share that with you guys. Um, uh, so today we're going to be uh, looking at mobile photography. You're probably wondering, mobile and desktop software, how do they work together? Um, well, actually, my idea for the webinar came while I was traveling. Um, I had my laptop with me, and uh, there was a couple of shots that I had taken that I really wanted to keep and print, and not just like a little 4 by 6 or 5 by 7 but I mean poster side, like a 16 by 20 And, uh, of course, uh, like most of you that have a smartphone, you probably process your image directly in your phone. I mean, there's so many photo pro post-processing apps out there that it's easy. You just process it and you can even share it right away. Um, but there are a couple of jewels out there or some photos that have an emotional uh, connection to you and you want to actually have them in print or, or even uh, enhance them even more with uh, other adjustments that you can't actually really do within the smartphone. And that's why we're here today. I actually pitched the idea to Nicole and she said, hey, that's a great idea. Let's try it out and have fun with it. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I would usually be in Lightroom, but my Lightroom's a little buggy today. So uh, we're straight into my new buddy right here, Photo Effects Lab. Now, um, I'm just going to briefly go over the main features of Photo Effects Lab for those of you who don't know this awesome new software from Topaz. Um, I've been using it now for a couple of weeks and I'm just loving it. It's fully integrated into Photoshop and Lightroom as well, uh, but I'm using it as the standalone software today. The only difference um, is that instead of saving it directly in the Lightroom, it'll just save anywhere on my desktop. That's about the only difference. All right, so um, the first thing you, you'd like to pay attention to is the left side panel right here. Um, again, like I said, there's an awesome tutorial that was actually made by Nicole on the Topaz website. Go there, check it out, and um, it's about 20, 25 minutes, and you'll get the ins and outs. Today, I'm just going to go briefly through it for a few minutes because I really want to focus on processing the images. So, the left panel right here is where your effects are and where all your products are, all your Topaz products that you have, whether it's Topaz Adjust, black and white, whatever, you'll find them here in the plugins panel. Now, I have pretty much all of them, so you'll see all of them here, uh, but if you only have two or three, they'll show up here. And this is really, really amazing. Actually, that's one of the main features of Photo Effects Lab, is that it puts all your plugins into one software, so your workflow is enhanced tremendously. It goes so fast now. You don't have to go into one software, save it, open a new software, re-import it, 
work on it, resave it, and et cetera, et cetera. Now everything's done seamlessly within Photo Effects Lab. And we'll, you'll see my workflow today and you'll see how it works. And uh, there are a couple of other um, uh, panes here, tabs here, Instatone, the history, just like you'll see in Lightroom or Photoshop, you'll have a history of what I've done on music. So let's get right to it. In front of you, you have one of my iPhone images that was actually done with an HDR app. Uh, so we have great tonal range in here, but it, it's a bit flat. And I actually will be printing this image to put on our, our photo travel wall. And so I want it to be perfect. And uh, there's no better place to do this than with photo effects. Now, in standard, usually when I, I work, I always start with one of the uh, plugins on the uh, left side here. But uh, for this image, I'm going to start on the right side, just to be the black sheep of the family here. So I'm, I want to boost the contrast up a little bit. Like I said, it's a little bit flat. So instead of using the contrast, I'm going to increase the dynamic range with dynamics. That's a little bit like a topaz adjust feature here. You'll see what it does. And I'm seeing whether I like it or not. And you can see that it's blowing away the sky here. So double clicking on it will bring it back to zero. So it's not a great um, uh, thing for this image. So let's just use the standard contrast. Just a little bit. Increase the exposure just a tad. And I want to recover the highlights that are here. So let's bring that back. You see how we're getting details back into the clouds here. Maybe with the whites too. Excellent. And I'm liking it like this. Now, what I want to do now is actually remove some of the noise that's in this image. And I will be doing that with topaz denoise. This is we're going to be focusing a lot on noise reduction. Why? We all know that sensors in smartphones are pretty small and they're not as high quality as prosumer cameras or DSLR. Um, so it's really, really important to get the noise out of your image, especially I'll be doing more images where you're uh, typically at a party or in dark situations and you'll see how denoise shines there. But let's start denoise off with a little jog instead of a sprint and we'll go through this image. So if I'm going at 100%, we can actually see some of the noise here in the sky. It's light, but it's there. You know, and if I'm going to be printing this image up, I might as well you know, use it to its full capacity. So let's, again, go back to our left side panel and just press on the Start Plugin button. And we're instantly brought to denoise. And it does a 200%. We're going to keep it at that. You can see that here. We have, you can actually move around with this thumbnail preview. And I'm going to keep it here so we can see some details here on the horizon and you can see some of the clouds. And like I said, this image doesn't have a tremendous amount of noise. So I'm going to try, uh, again, like in all Topaz products, there's some presets on the left side. And after that, you can tweak them on the right side. So let's always start with one of the presets. Let's try light. Not bad, but not enough. So let's go to moderate. There we go. Moderate works really well in the sky. Um, let's go see some, some of the details here. Good job here. We're keeping some details. Excellent. We see the spikes here in those little spiky trees that I like to call. Excellent. So this is looking good. Let's go see in the sky if we can, in your dark areas, sometimes the noise is bigger there. And of course it is. Now, one of the functions that I love in Topaz Denoise is Luma. So that brings your image into black and white. Now let me just show you an area here that's uh, not completely gray. And you can really see the, the, the noise actually a lot better when it's a black and white image than it is a color image. You can have better, a better understanding of the noise that's in the image. So I'm going to actually increase the noise reduction just a tad. Now it's always a compromise between noise reduction and detail, but denoise does such a great job 
that you can actually boost it quite a bit. Now again, I want to go back into my dark area and see how that's done. Um, you can always have a before and after by either left clicking on the mouse or using the space bar. I like to use the mouse. So you can see all the noise that was there before and how it's reduced now. Let's go see if the details were kept with, the, with what I did. Actually, that's pretty good. Let's go back to RGB before and after. It's a little smooth here, so I'm going to go now and on my right panel do some more tweaking. Just in the shadow, there seems to be a little too much noise. I'm going to reduce, uh, sorry, it's, it's too much smoothness. So I'm going to reduce that, get some details back in. Uh, let's go see the highlights area, how that's doing. Actually, the highlights look really, really good. Uh, let's go back here. And that's, that looks a little soft here, so I'm going to remove a little bit of the denoising effect. There we go. Now we have some details back into the vineyards. Uh, it's looking good. The spiky trees are really nice. Um, I don't know if someone knows the name of those spiky trees. Go right ahead and type it in. <laughs> it's, I always call them spiky trees. All right. And we can maybe recover just a tad more detail. But again, it's a give and take all the time. You're recovering detail. You're adding some noise back into the image. Um, so like this, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that right now. Um, of course, what you can do to increase that, and I'll show you that in another image, is going to the red and blue channels. But it's not necessary for when you're doing really moderate or light uh, denoising. So let's click OK, bottom right. And I'm having a white screen right now. But should come back. There we go. All right. Again, I'll click Fit Image here so we can see it. And uh, I forgot to duplicate my layer to show you before and after, but I won't next time. <laughs> so this is pretty it, much. Yeah. I'm sorry. You can actually go to your History tab and go back oh. to the very top where you opened your image. You're absolutely right. I forgot about that part. <laughs> there you go. And we discussed it prior. <laughs> All right, so there we have a before shot and, of course, the after shot. So a nice brighter, no more noise. It's looking good. I think it's almost ready for print. Actually, I'm probably going to save that image today, and uh, that's the one I'm going to print to put on my wall. So let's move on to the next image. So I'm going to go to File, Save, or Control-S, and I'm going to go and save it on my desktop, not as a TIFF. Uh, but as a JPEG. And I'll just click Save. Maximum quality, optimized, OK. And here we go. Our image is now saved on our desktop. Now let's go back to the Plugins tab here, and we'll open a new image. I don't want to save the changes. It's already done. And I'm going to actually open an image that will push the limits of uh, the Topaz Denoise software. Let's open an image that I took at a party with some friends. I'll duplicate my layer right away. And um, as you can see, it was very dark. Uh, I went to the maximum of what my iPhone could do at the time. So we'll need to brighten this image up. And uh, of course, once you start playing, uh, post-processing uh, a JPEG coming from a smartphone, you're actually ruining a lot of the image, bringing in a lot of noise, and that's where Topaz Denoise will shine. So let's do that right now, bring the exposure up. That's looking good. Let's see what the contrast will do. Darkens it up a little bit, but we're keeping some nice uh, detail here in the skin. Um, let's bring the exposure up even more. I'm liking that. Now, this is a little bit reddish for me, so let's play with the temperature. Not too much. Will the tint affect it? There we go. Playing with the tints. Not too much. We don't want green skin. 
There we go. I'm liking that like this. Let's see what Dynamics does. Ah, look at that. Dynamic works really well here. Good. Now, what's great also in the standalone edition of Photo Effects Lab, but it's not uh, with the plugin, is the crop function up here. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and crop this image a little bit and recenter it and click done. Click on fit. Now we're ready, but of course we've introduced tons and tons of noise in this photo. Now if you want to keep this image and you want to show it off to your friends, you might as well remove the noise. So let's go right up into Topaz Denoise. Now look at that beautiful noise. Let's go to one-to-one. -one. Those teeth are scary. All right. Let's look at these two people right there. And I think moderate won't do the trick here. Again, we're starting on the left panel. We're starting with a preset, and then we're going to go tweak it up. And let's go straight into Luma this time. There we go. We can see the noise a lot better. Let's try strong. Oh, strong is doing a good job. What about strongest? Okay, strongest removes practically everything, but it's a little too much. We're losing a lot of details in the eyes. The hair is all smudgy. So let's go back to strong. Excellent. Now we have more details in the eyes and the teeth. Uh, if we go into the dark area, It's actually looking not so bad in the dark area. Now remember, uh, the darker the image, the higher the ISO on a smartphone, and the more noise you'll have. So you can't, uh, you'll have to find a compromise between detail and noise reduction. All right, it's a question of personal taste. Uh, some people might like it on strongest and have absolutely no noise whatsoever and smoothed out. Just like a, um, just like some chocolate icing on a cake, I prefer to have a bit more detail and uh, a, a little bit more, and with that, a little bit more noise. All right, let's see if we can tweak it. Let's just see if we can boost it just a little bit, not too much. There, yeah, that's not bad. Let's see if we can bring in some detail. That's not bad. There's still a bit of noise here. That's in a light area. So we can adjust the highlight here and just bring it up to see. It should only affect the highlight area. Oh, actually, wrong way. There we go. That's not bad, actually. Now let's go into a dark area and adjust the shadows. That's a little too much. You can see it smushed all the hair here. And we were losing all the details in the eyes. So just a little bit did the trick. You can always click before and after. Look at that difference. Before and after. Just totally amazing. Again, before and after. Wow, I'm loving this. Now, let's go try the red and blue channels here. We're going to go into some area up here. I'm going to click on the red channel and looking at this, this is really smooth in this area. How about this dark area here? Oh, there's some blotchiness in there. Let's see if we can remove it. So we go to the adjust color red slider and just boost it up a little bit, see what it does. Is it helping out? A little bit, not much, but a little bit. Let's try the blue channel now. Oh, there's some blotchiness there too. Move the blue slider in. It's not affecting it that much. Let's try another area. Right in here. All right, double clicking on anything will bring the values to zero. And it's actually better when it has less of it in. There. 
Now let's go back to RGB. Let's go to our faces to see what we've done. Before and after. A little too smooth for my taste, so let's bring up the details. Maybe reduce the blur a little bit. That's looking pretty good, before and after. Now, another thing that you might want to do when you have these dark images, you might actually want to add a little bit of grain. It's funny that we're in a denoising software and they have a grain function, but sorry about that. I got a little pop-up Twitter. I thought I closed that. <laughs> so, but it actually will help. It actually adds some kind of like a film grain to the image, not, not a, an artifacting grain that we find in JPEG images. And I can, you can actually add character to your image. So I am adding some grain here, and it's actually looking pretty good. So before and after, it brought up some details as well. So before again and after, I'm liking this. Click OK. Again, the reason I'm getting a white screen is probably because of the seminar. The webinar it's, uh, wasn't doing that before we started that, so once it's finished processing, we're going to be back in PhotoFX Lab without having that screen. There we go. So let's unclick before and after. What a big difference. Now again, some of you might find it a little too smooth. Some of you might find it not smooth enough. Again, it's just a question of personal taste. You can play around with it. The important thing is to show you how denoise works and how powerful it is for you guys to use. Now, I would actually save this image as is and send it to my three friends, and I'd be the life of the party, and they'd be going, yeah, yeah, thank you for doing this beautiful image of us. Your iPhone is so great, it takes awesome photos. Only I would know that I tweaked it in Topaz. All right, let's move on to another image. File, open. I will not save this one. And let's see here. Oh, yes, I want to show you guys another beautiful function in Denoise. When I first got my iPhone 4S, um, I was taking photos of this beautiful fondue evening that I was having. And um, I noticed something that was pretty alarming. And it was this line here at the bottom. Let me zoom in for you guys to see it better. You can see this line here. That was actually a defect on the sensor itself. And I went back to the Apple Store and they changed the sensor on site. So that wasn't a problem. But the problem was that I had taken dozens and dozens of images without ever noticing that that was there. And it actually came out even worse on high ISO images in really dark situations like this image. And um, denoising as a standard won't remove that. You need something called debanding to remove. That's actually a horizontal band across there. And what's great is that in Topaz Denoise, there is a debanding function that works tremendously well. So let's see if we can remove that banding from, from the bottom there. So let's go back to one to one. Let's go down and find our band. You can see it right here across the screen here. Super ugly. Now we have GPEG strongest with debanding. Why not try that? It's a default. So let's see what happens. And it's gone. It just completely disappeared. Now, if you look at the right panel here, the bottom one is called debanding. Now, it automatically did horizontal and vertical. I don't need vertical, so I'll just unclick it. It will make the processing go a lot faster. And you can play with the banding width. Uh, in this case, it's perfect as is. I don't see anything. It's not adding anything. Uh, it's just perfect. Let's look at before and after. Isn't that amazing? That band just disappeared completely from my image, uh, thanks to a faulty sensor from Apple. And I saved my cheese fondue image. Now, how about the rest of the noise in this image? There's a lot of JPEG artifacting in here. So let's see if we can. We used strongest, and there's still some stuff in there. So let's boost this a little bit more. A little bit more. Let's go look in Luma how it looks. There's still some there. How about the fruit? 
cheese fondues better with fruit. That's my saying. Screw the vegetables. All right, let's try the highlights. A little bit better, but I would actually boost the strength up just a, even more. Let's go ballistic on this one. Before and after, I'm loving it like this. Let's check the debanding. Before and after, awesome. I'm liking this. Let's go back to RGB and let's just click OK. And, you know, I'm in Canada, so you can imagine that the white screen is a snowstorm or something, even though we're still in summer. Um, okay, I can do maybe the little uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, for those of you who know Jeopardy. Uh, there we go. Fit screen. And again, I forgot to duplicate my layer, but um, you can go into history before. You can see that band at the bottom. And, of course, all the noise everywhere in the image and after a nice smooth image just like the cheese should be nice and smooth and slick all right now would i touch this image even more maybe let's just see exposure not really contrast oh yeah it brings the cheese out even more our eye focuses a lot more on this beautiful piece of maybe a, maybe a piece of apple or pear on I mean, it and uh, how about dynamics? Will that do anything? That actually doesn't work well for this type of image. We want that smoothness uh, in, in the, in the mid-tones. So no, no contrasting mid-tones. And the image, for me, is perfect as is right here. All right. So let's move on to a new image. Let's open. Don't need to save this. Now, how about going... Uh, denoising something that was shot during the day. You're thinking, why would I need to denoise an image that was shot during the day when the ISO is going to be so low? Well, if you're like me and you're post-processing your images directly into your iPhone and you realize when you get home and you transfer them to your computer uh, and they're noisy, the reason is that since it is a low-quality JPEG, image, the minute you start post-processing it on your iPhone with any editing app, you're actually uh, reducing the quality of that imaging, image and introducing noise. So you're at home and you see this beautiful photo that you took, I think that was Cape Cod, um, and you're thinking, wow, look at that blue sky, I boosted the saturation in my phone and it looked really good on screen, and I come home and on my desktop it looks like crap, the sky. If I, if I zoom in one by one, uh, we see here there's tons of noise here. The gradient is all off. Um, there's even, I don't know if you guys can see with the quality of the, the webinar, but there's some banding, like there's some, uh, I shouldn't call it banding, but there's some darker lines in here running diagonally across the sky. It's not really pretty. The bottom part is okay, uh, but the sky is ruined, and that's normal because blues and reds, in general, hate oversaturation, and the colors just go wacky all over the place. So we can fix that with denoise. So you see, it's not only about dark images taken in dark situations; it's processed images in your iPhone that, when you're looking on a screen or if you print it out, you're going to go, "Ooh, that needs more work." All right. So back into denoise. You can really see it here. It's smooth, it's smooth, and then there's this line across where the you know, JPEG artifact and the noise is just coming in, and we need to get rid of that ASAP. So let's try moderate. Again, on the left panel, we're starting with a default. And look what just moderate did. It's amazing. Before and after. Before and after. Maybe we can do a bit less. Maybe light will do the trick for this. There, light does the trick. It removes all the unwanted noise. Let's go into a darker area up here, and it's pretty good. Maybe just a tad more on the right side. I can do that. There we go. Nice and smooth. Let's move on. Make sure that the boat wasn't smoothed out before and after. Practically nothing was touched on the boat. 
before and after. Awesome. How about those birds? Before and after. We lost a bit of detail here on some of the wings um, on this little bird, but the other ones weren't really touched. Um, it did kind of smooth out around this bird, but I'd rather that than all this noise. So again, there's a bit of a compromise, but you know, it's a minor, minor detail. So once we have all that, let's go to 101 and get a better idea before and after. This is looking really, really good. I don't think I'll, I'll need to touch anything else in this image. So you can see that even with a light preset on this, uh, on this uh, left panel, reduced the, the noise completely. It completely removed it in just one click. And then I was nitpicking and uh, touched, retouched it a little bit more on the right side, but I probably could have left it just with that default and it would have been perfect. Let's click OK, see the snowstorm again. And here we're back into Photo Effects Lab. Now I think this image would actually look good uh, with a little bit of topaz just in it. I mean, it's a little oversaturated. Of course, I could remove some saturation, uh, but it, it lacks a bit of punch. And I like this old wooden boat. So let's go into topaz adjust. And you can see how quickly the, the, the plugins load up here in Photo Effects Lab. It's just amazing. Um, let's go into the classic collection here and see if there's a plugin that will work really nicely here. I can see by scrolling over, I can see the preview. That gives me a bit of an idea. And maybe into the Vibrant collection. Boost seems to do a pretty, pretty good job. But look how it's ruining the sky. So, uh, sorry, not Boost Bolt. So maybe I won't use this plugin. It works well on the boat, but the sky goes completely berserk. So maybe I won't, I won't use Topaz or any of these plugins unless I can see something here. Ah, okay, French countryside. Let's see how that works. Before and after. It's actually making it a lot duller. So that's not what I wanted. Uh, remember that it, th these are low quality JPEGs, so smooth gradients will be really, really hard to get. Um, so I'll just cancel this and I'll see if I can use another image in the Topaz Adjust for those of you that would like to see Adjust in action. I would actually keep that image as is and um, just move on to the next image. File, open, won't save this. Now I will use, oh this is a beautiful image that I took from the window of my plane going this is over the Swiss Alps um, on our way to uh, Florence, Italy. And it was the sunrise. Uh, my girlfriend was sleeping beside me. And I tried to wake her up. And uh, she was still sleeping. So she had to watch and see my photos after. So just like in, uh, in Photoshop, the, the shortcut keys are pretty similar. So Control J to duplicate the layer. Uh, and before even going into denoise, there is a little bit of noise, but we're going to be adding more noise into it if I if I plan on going into Topaz Adjust or any other software. So let's go into Topaz Adjust. I know we can do a better job with this image here. I actually want, sorry about that, I actually want this image on my wall as well. Uh, and I'm thinking um, that if it had a better boost to it, it would look nice. Let's try bold. Oh, bold is looking really good. A little over at the top for me, but we're in the right direction here. I might use it as a starting point. And clarity is, oh, actually, I'm liking clarity before and after. You can see the edges of the mountains here. I'm loving this. The details are still here in the mountains in the front, before and after. Uh, of course, we're seeing some nice JPEG artifact in here. We're going to go fix that after. But this, I'm liking this. So let's go into our global adjustments and see if we need to tweak this a little bit. Let's go into protect highlights because we have some highlights here. Not really. You know, now that I've been using Photo Effects Lab a lot, uh, I'm not using this panel as much because of the panel that's already in Photo Effects Lab. My workflow has already gone into Photo Effects Lab and in each individual plugin. 
Um, so, but I'm still playing around with it here. Let's try details. The strength here. And a little over the top. Let's go back. Before, after. I'm liking it like this. So, Topaz just does, it, does its magic once again. And we can see before and after. And that's looking really good. Now, we did add some noise into this image. You can see it right in here. And, uh, of course, there's some artifacting. But that was actually there before as well. Before, you can actually see it there. It just enhanced it a little bit. We'll see. That's more like blotching the noise. I don't know what denoise will do with that. But uh, let's push it to its limits. But before that, I just had a, an idea. I think this image would look really good in black and white. So why not go into the Topaz black and white effects plugin? Wow, look at that. I'm, I'm liking this as is. Wow, this is good. Which preset is that? It says last use. That doesn't help me a lot. Going over, it looks like a warm tone. And it was warm tone one. Yep, warm tone three. Actually, warm tone three is good. Two, one, three, before and after. Actually, I like one better. I like a, the contrast effect of one just a little bit better. In black and white, it looks amazing. It almost looks like Ansel Adams took this photo. <coughs> All right. Uh, again, when it comes to the side panel, I'll just retouch it in Photo Effects Lab. So I'll just click OK here. We're back in here, before and after. Now we have the noise to get rid of. Let's go into the noise. Oh, look at that noise. All right, let's try moderate. Wow, look at that. Not bad, not bad. Let's see in the dark areas. Oh, there's still some uh, noise in there. The lighter areas. We did a good job in the light areas, though. Really, really good job. So we're going to focus on the mid-tones and the darker areas where we can see some artifact in here. So it's in black and white, so I don't really need to go into Luma. Actually, yeah, it doesn't matter. A, there's a little warm tone to it, but we still get the gist. We can really, the color's not there, so we can work straight with the RGB version since it's already pretty much a black and white photo. So let's start by overall strength. That's looking pretty good. I want a bit more information here. Let's go and see the shadows down here. See if we can fix that. Well, that's good, maybe a little too much. There we go. Because we don't want to lose the detail as well. So we'll come up here and see how the details look. They're a little smudged out here. So let me just remove some of the shadow, just a tad. That's looking good. And just a little bit. There we go, before and after. Wow, what a difference. I actually like this smooth, silky quality. For this image, it works really well because it's like rolling fog uh, on a morning day, which is basically what this is, only shot 33,000 feet up in the air. So as I mentioned, um, the highlights look really, really good. I don't think I need to tweak those at all. Um, now again, there's a compromise to be made. There is still a little bit of noise here but compared to before, not that much. Um, I can try and reduce it a little bit more. Am I losing details here? Yeah, we did lose some, so let's bring it back to 34. There we go. Before and after, perfect. Click OK. And voila. So this is my final image. Um, actually, I might just crop it a little bit before. I'm actually going to save this image. I'm loving it. So let me just crop it and do a bit more of a, I want to keep a bit of the sky. This bottom portion is a bit useless. And click Done. There, I like this landscape format a lot better. I think this is really good on my travel phone. Uh, especially that I don't have tons of black and white, but I think it's more dramatic in black and white right here. All right, let's save this beautiful image. 
save desktop as a JPEG. There's no point in saving it as a TIFF if your original file was a JPEG. I mean, you can't really enhance the quality of a lower quality file. I mean, you can see the logic there, so that's why I'm keeping it as the same type of file. And I'll just keep the same name, doesn't matter. Maximum optimized, okay. And we're good to go. Now, I don't know if, Nicole, if I have time to do one more or if we're going to do Q&A. Um, uh, we definitely have some Q&A, but if it's a quick one, if you'd like to show it, for sure. Oh, let me see. Well, as, uh, as you're doing that next one, I do have a couple just technical questions for you that you might be able to answer as you're working through it. Sure. Okay, uh, so... I have a couple questions. One from Byron. He said, he was talking about a specific image, but I think any image would be okay. He said, did this image come out of your phone full resolution? He would like to understand the process for getting a full resolution image from his iPhone. If I email it to myself, it gets even more compressed. And a lot of people have asked how you specifically get, transfer your images from your smartphone to your computer. Like, what's the best way that you suggest? Yeah, I can answer that question. That's a, actually a very, very good question. Emailing yourself at photos is probably the worst thing you want to do if you're planning on uh, printing it or retouching it because a smartphone, I'm not sure about Android phones, but I, I am familiar with iPhones, and they compress it for email, so there, you'll never have your full resolution in it. So email is out of the question. You can do it two ways. Um, the best way and the simplest way is to set up photo streams. Um, photo stream I think works from the iPhone 4 up and you can download the software either for Mac or PC and you can uh, set it up it'll set up in your default photos folder and it'll all your photos from your camera roll will be synced directly into the cloud uh, via iCloud and onto your desktop computer automatically so that's the best way to do it it is buggy. Sometimes you have to uninstall it and reinstall it. I, I know for a PC I have to do that. It doesn't bug as much on my uh, my uh, MacBook, but uh, on a PC sometimes it stops syncing, and even though I click refresh. So um, the other way is just to plug your phone uh, into your uh, your computer. iTunes will pop up, and uh, you can you can close iTunes. iTunes is not important. But what you need to do is just go into your folders. Um, actually, I'll do it right now for you guys so you guys can see. I'm going to plug my phone in. You're going to hear a little doo just like a new hard drive is coming up. And uh, I'm going to look at my folders here. And it'll show up right here as, my, as a separate disk if you want. It takes a little while, but it does. There we go. Apple iPhone. You click on here, and the only thing you'll have access to are your images, and they'll be split into different folders, and, you, and unfortunately, they're not by date, they're random, so <laughs> it's a bit, bit messy there, but you just click in, and your, your images are there. Drag and drop them, copy paste them, do whatever you want, and you'll have the full resolution image uh, directly from your iPhone. So that's how the two ways of doing it. Hope that answers the question. Definitely. Awesome. And while there's another one coming, I'll go into Topaz Adjust for this image. This image deserves Topaz Adjust. I mean, <laughs> and this is just... actually a good question or a good um, image uh, for an attendee. His name's Andrew, and I'll just ask his question. You can tell him about Topaz Adjust a little bit more. Um, sure. He said he bought Photo Effects Lab earlier today, and he's been following this webinar and is glad that he did. He said um, he's going to be purchasing some new plugins when he can and was wondering if you could suggest which ones to try and acquire first. He says, to date, my digital subjects are mainly family and cars. Aha, uh -huh, well, there you go, cars. Um, <laughs> Topaz Adjust uh, is probably the first plugin that you would like to purchase. It's very versatile. Um, it has tons of effects in it. Uh, you can check out uh, a lot of the other webinars uh, that are done by other photographers or even my last webinar that I did. I use Topaz Adjust mostly all the time in that webinar. Uh, it's just awesome. I'm, I'm always in Topaz Adjust, whether it be for family portraits, architectural 
uh, landscape, and old rundown cars like this one. So yes, that would be my first choice. And then Denoise, um, just because uh, I find that it's probably the best noise removal software out there. I do like the noise removal in Lightroom when there's a little bit of noise, but when it comes to extreme noise, nothing beats Denoise. So that would be my second purchase. And for old cars, you want to go into a vibrant collection and you want to boost the crap out of it like I did right now. So before and after, it's just a completely new image. Look how dull this looks before. And you're going, oh yeah, that's a nice image. And boom! And I haven't even touched, uh, tweaked it, but uh, I don't even think I need to. It's just perfect as is. Um, I might remove, reduce or not the saturation. I might play in Photo Effects Lab to tweak it. Let's go do that, actually. Click OK. We're here. Go to our right panel here. Let's bring the dynamics up. See how that works. Even more before and after. How about contrast? And eh, maybe not. Double click on it to bring it back to zero. Actually, it's perfect as is. I wouldn't even touch a thing. So again, before and after, from blah to wow. And you know that's Chopaz Adjust for you. It's a super powerful plugin. It's the first one I ever bought um, from Topaz, and uh, I keep referring to it all the time. I mean, even in fashion photography, a good friend of mine is a fashion photographer, and he uses Topaz Adjust uh, to tweak his image. He has some presets in Photoshop, and it just works really, really well. All awesome. right. Thanks. All right, uh, Stephen is asking, what do you do or can you um, do something to be able to print out your iPhone files in 16 by 20 inches or, or even larger? Do you, um, are you able to do that with this resolution? Um, it depends which iPhone you have. Um, the iPhone 4S has 8 megapixels, and even the iPhone 4 with 5 megapixels, um, I did I print an iPhone 4? I think the biggest I went was 11 by 14. Not that I didn't want a 16 by 20. I mean, I never had the uh, desire to print a 16 by 20 with one of my iPhone 4 photos. But definitely an iPhone 4s 8 megapixel photo, um, you can have it printed up um, 16 by 20, no problem. Um, if you want, you can resize it. Uh, in Photoshop, but I don't even think it's necessary. Um, I, I used to print 16 by 20s with my 5 megapixel DSLR at the time, um, so I don't think there's going to be a problem with an 8 megapixel iPhone photo. All right, let's see here. Other questions coming through? Um, Emily asks, if you move an image from the phone to Dropbox, does it send the uncompressed file? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, great. Yeah. But you've got to do it um, via, you have to look at which app does it. I mean, some apps will compress it automatically just because it takes less time. So you've got to be careful about that. And when you're purchasing or downloading an app, make sure that it will save the full file resolution. That's really, really important. Okay, great. While the questions are coming in, I'll just open another image, uh, give a challenge here to, to denoise. So here's a surfer in Costa Rica, sunset. This was processed within the phone, so lots of noise. So we want to get rid of that noise. Now this is going to be a heck of a challenge because it was processed to the max and the noise is tremendous. You can really see it here. I don't think it will remove everything, but I think we can get a really, really good uh, result. So let's go into the noise. And let's move into where the details will be, which will be on the surfer dude right there. So let's try moderate. And clearly, moderate doesn't do the job. Strong is not bad. How about strongest? Strongest does the best job if we go into the sky. 
before and after. It's awesome, but we are losing the surfer view a little bit to, in the details. So let's bring out the details here on the right side. So there we go. Now it brought some noise back in, but it's not the same type of noise that it brought in. You can see before and after, and I, I actually be pretty happy with that. Now let's look at the dark areas before and after. Look at that amazing job that it did before and after. You can even check the red channel. Looks good. Blue channel. Looks good. And Luma. Pretty good. There's some detail here. Of course, we do see a little bit of artifacting, but uh, it's very minor compared to this. So this is an example of an extreme image that was processed. I mean, uh, I don't even have the original file of this, but I, I really wanted this to be purple and super high contrasted. So it looked good on my iPhone screen, but when I exported it, it was like, ooh, I can't print this. And I actually would like to print this. And I can't do it, and my room couldn't help me out there, so I had to come to the email. So let's see it there what it did here. See, in this area, it's having a bit of a problem, um, but uh, overall, it did a pretty good job. Look at that. Nice and smooth. Bring them back to our subject. And let's just click OK on them. Boom. All right. History. Before and after. Let's zoom in for you guys to see with the surfer dude before and after. Amazing job. I'm loving the noise so much. All right. Would I tweak this image a little bit more? Oops. Please. Maybe. Maybe I would. Let's see. How about dynamics? Well, look at the sky just popping out here. Of course, we're we're tweaking it so we're adding even more noise in the image, but uh, I would actually use denoise. In my workflow, I would use denoise last. Once I've done everything and I've massacred my image with all the adjustments, then I would go and clean it up in the denoise. So that would be my general workflow. So I would use every single other plugin to adjust my image and the right panel here, and then I would go into denoise. So that would be my workflow. Great. I have um, a ton of people asking about what your favorite camera apps are. If you could, um, as far as on the phone, processing in the phone, and then, you know, then taking it over here, if you have any known camera apps that will save at a full resolution so you can then bring it into Topaz Denoise if necessary. Right, right, right. Um, well, it goes without saying that I really love King Camera. Uh, <laughs> it's my app. I use it all the time. It has it's like a it's like Camera Plus and Photo Forge kind of combined into one. Um, you have uh, the presets that are done like in Camera Plus, and then you have your Photoshop-like module where you can create your own presets. We're probably one of the to the last time I checked, we were the only app that where you could actually save your presets into the uh, presets area. Um, and we are in our in our photo desk, which is like the camera roll, you can actually copy and paste your effects from one photo to multiple photos. So when you've actually taken tons of photos at this party, you adjust one photo and you want all of them to look the same, just copy, multi-select the other ones, paste, and boom, they all look the same. So yeah, for HDR, I use uh, HDR Fusion, and for panoramas, I, I use an awesome app called AutoStitch. All right, thank you so much. Well, we have come to the end of the hour, and it looks like we've gotten to most of your questions, so I'm going to say thank you so much to you, Yannick. Everyone really enjoyed this, especially um, people who weren't familiar with Denoise, so that was definitely a big hit. <laughs> Well, I'm glad because it's a it's a, an unsung hero. I mean, Denoise saved a lot of my photos, and I uh, I hope it'll save a lot of your photos. So thank you again, Yannick. I really appreciate you joining us here today. 
It was my pleasure in uh, any time. All right, perfect. And uh, we'll definitely take you up on that. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody else, for joining us here today. And hopefully you're able to join us for some upcoming webinars soon. Bye-bye.